Hey, hey, what's up, my friend? So welcome back to this week's market analysis, all right? It's really good to have you with me again. And uh, just to let you know that in the coming weeks ahead, right, in the future videos, what I'll try to do is that before I analyze the market each week, I will try to provide with you a trading tidbit, right? It could be something like, you know, talking about psychology, talking about trade management, talking about maybe, you know, your trading plan and stuff like that. So basically, there are bite sites, you know, trading nuggets, trading wisdom to kind of, you know, help you become a better trader. Okay, so that will be at the start of, you know, each week video before we analyze the markets. Okay, so back to this week's video, right? We will be looking across the different financial markets. We'll look at the FX, the commodities, gold, and stuff like that. And also uh, pay attention to the trading tidbit that I've provided you in today's video because I find it something that I really feel strongly about. So I want you to watch this and kind of digest what I'm trying to share with you later later okay so with that said right i will see you in this week's video okay so before i discuss about the markets today i want to talk to you about a question that i've received a lot over the years right especially from new traders who are you know getting started in this business they like to ask me questions like hey reina which is the the best trading entry should i wait for a candle close uh, which is the best trading indicator, Raina? Right? Is the moving average better than the RSI? Is the RSI better than a stochastic? Or, you know, hey, Raina, how should I uh, trail my stop loss? Should I use, you know, 5 ATR, 6 ATR, 7 ATR? Should I use a moving average to trail my stop loss? So you can see that the questions that I receive, right, is very focused on parameters, right? Like, which is the best parameter out there? Like, it's as, it's as though there is the best, you know, trading tool or indicator out there, right? I'm sure you, you should know by now, right? Even if you are new to trading that, you know, you often have, have heard, you know, seasoned traders telling you that there isn't a best trading tool or indicator out there. So if you were to have, you know, questions like this to keep digging up which is the best, then you kinda, you're kind of like, you know, missing the big picture, okay? So let me explain why. So uh, a, a trading strategy or a system, right, whatever you want to call it, right, has a few parts to it or... Let's let's put it better, right? Let's call it profitable trading. Okay, we, we don't discuss about the strategy. We, let's discuss about profitable trading. What does it entail? Okay, you have your entries, right? That's one, right? To tell you when to enter the trade. You have your exits. You have your trade management and your risk management. Of course, these are just the four basic components. You can go in much deeper and talk about market portfolio and stuff like that. But let's, you know, just keep things simple, right? Any trading strategy or rather any profitable trading strategy or trader you come across, it has to involve these four things, your entries, exits, trade management, and your risk management. So can you see that, you know, why I said earlier that if you were to just focus on your entries, the best parameters, the best indicators out there, you are basically ignoring the big picture. So what is the big picture? The big picture is this, right? The four components that I just shared with you. It's like, you know, you are so obsessed with finding the best perfect tree that you cannot see the forest. And this is important, right? Because no matter how good your entry is, right? You will never, ever, ever, and I repeat, ever get 100% win rate. Never. Okay? But you don't need 100% win rate to be a profitable trader, right? You can have like a 50% win rate and if you have good exits, trade management, and risk management, you can still be a consistently profitable trader. But the thing is, you must take into consideration these four factors and not just focus on the entries alone by in itself. Do not forego the forest for the trees. Right? Look bigger, take a step back, and ask yourself, am I asking the right questions? Am I looking at the big picture? Is what I'm doing right? moving me closer to becoming a consistently profitable trader. I would say those are far more important questions, right? Instead of asking, right, uh, you know, which is the best entry? Which is the best indicator? Is the 20 better than the 50 period moving average? I mean, really, right? Look at the big picture and I find that those are much more powerful questions and, thought, and thoughts, right, to have, okay? I think much better questions would be stuff like, you know, do I have a complete cohesive trading plan which you know takes into consideration my entries exits trade management and risk management right what am i doing to ensure that i can consistently follow my trading plan day in and day out what are my strengths and weakness as a trader and what am i doing to play into my strengths 
and to you know overcome my weakness right those are you know far more far more important questions than just asking you know which is the best entry okay so i think this is so it's so important and i'm even even you know studying this uh so-called trading tidbit right at the start of this video before i even get to this week's market analysis uh, the reason i do this is i know sometimes towards the end of the video right not many traders are around right and they tend to miss out you know, some of the good important information like this right i think this is really important so i'm putting it to the front of this video to try you know capture as much attention as many traders as i can get right so don't forget uh this uh this important point i'm trying to make today so with that said right let's move on to this week's market analysis right uh but, 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 the, since this is the first week of december right i tend to look at uh across the different sectors of the market so we look at the currencies we look at the uh commodities gold oil etc so the first market it is the euro dollar so this is this market is generally still in an uptrend. You can see that the price is above the 200 period moving average, right? And what's interesting is that this market pretty much forms a head and shoulders pattern, right? This is the neckline. It broke below it and then it formed another inverse head and shoulders pattern, right? Looking set to possibly continue trading higher, possibly retesting these uh, highs over here. So at the looks of it, right? I don't have any trading setup on this, right? Pretty much on the sideline, okay? But the I do, I do agree that the longer term trend is still towards the upside. Uh, this is a British pound dollar. Longer term trend is still towards the upside, right? You can see that this market is still above the 200 period moving average. But in terms of setup, right, I'm not really seeing anything. Okay, if I let's see if I go down to the four hour, right? This could be a possible uh, previous resistance, resistance, resistance could act as support. This could be an area that you could look to uh, a trade from if you are keen, right? Aussie dollar. Aussie dollar, right? You can see that the price is below this 200 period moving average. So generally, this trend is towards the downside, right? Very straightforward stuff, right? Getting a bias. But in terms of trading setup, again, right? Uh, not really seeing anything, but one possibility is for price to retrace back towards this uh, previous resistance that could put, sorry, yeah, previous resistance, right? And this is this level of resistance that I just highlighted here, right? So this would be a level to look for for a potential shorting opportunity towards the downside for Aussie dollar. New Zealand dollar, all right, I think this is interesting because if you look at the big picture on New Zealand dollar, it pretty much came into this area of a support around the 6850 area, around this area. Of, you know, just let me go to the weekly and you can see what I mean. All right, this is a, a strong area of support. And notice that this over here, right, the market has somewhat stalled at this area of support on this, you can see it clearly on the daily time frame. So there is, it's still too early to tell whether this is a uh, reversal at support or you know would the price likely to continue trading lower i have no i have no idea myself but let's say you have you know whatever bias you may have maybe a piece of fundamental news that kind of you know uh that you have at the, at the back of your mind and you want to short this market i would say this would be a good level to look for a shorting opportunity right uh, area of resistance to look to short this market alternatively right if the new zealand dollar just couldn't rally back towards this high and it forms somewhat like a you know a lower a lower high something like you know a descending triangle right you have lower highs coming into this support right there's a chance to actually short this breakdown as well right because the more time support is being tested within a short period of time right the likelihood that support will break so these are a couple of uh, trading scenarios that i envision right towards the downside uh, i'm not bullish on on new zealand dollar yet right you can see that it's still below the 200 period moving average so for me to be bullish right uh, two things, right? If either it gets back above this 200 period moving average or it basically breaks above, let me withdraw this, or it basically breaks above this uh, high over here, this area of resistance. If you can break it, right, then if we test any holes, right, then you know, there's a good chance, right, this market could continue trading higher. Okay, so this is for New Zealand dollar. Dollar Canadian is just a, well, it's a, <laughs> look at this, you know, a puke, you know, it just, just all the way down towards this, this lows over here. Uh, price got rejected at this area of resistance and the 200 period moving average. I uh, don't have a setup for this, but for traders who are looking to take counter trend trades, okay, this is a key level to look at on the four hour time frame, right? Area of support. So the price could possibly trade lower, triggering the stops below this low, this low, this low, and then close higher, right? Say like here, right? You can look to take a trade in anticipation of higher prices. But this is a counter trend trade after all, if you look at a daily time frame. So you really want to be, you know, quick in taking your profits, right? Don't, don't expect to you know the price to reverse, you know, back all the way up towards this height. Instead, right, look to take a, a profits, partial profits, right? Whenever it makes sense, right? Because there's a good chance the market could, you know, 
continue trading lower from from here okay and uh, another one dollar yen so dollar yen right this market has been you know just in a range between 114.50 and the 108 level right so you can see that it's pretty much in a range so in the range what do you, what do you want to do right you want to buy low sell high so sometimes right in the range right you can have a range within the range like in this case over here you have another range within this bigger range over here and this is where you know you could you know trade this if you want to okay so this over here price came down lower triggering the lows of here and here and then it finally you know closed back above this highs over here so this is uh what i usually call usually call a false break where price basically took out the prior lows and then closed higher okay so it does not mean that you know you have a false break you have to take the trade because a lot of there are other considerations like you know is there a, a valid is there enough room for this market to move right because you can see that when it closed over here it came right smack into this uh a swing uh swing high then there's another swing high over here and this is another potential level where the market could reverse right this previous support term resistance so you can see that you have quite a number of obstacles and structures coming in your way so usually, right, if I were to take a trade, I want to see that whether the market, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about from a swing trading perspective, I want to see whether the market has enough room to at least, you know, get to the first possible target. So in this case, there isn't, right? So I didn't take the trade. But one thing I want to highlight out is that, you know, sometimes if you don't get a decent risk to reward on your trade, what you can do is to use a limit order because sometimes the market may just fill you at a favorable price. So in this case, right, you can see that I've marked up this, area of support this line over here so what you can do is that if the market is you know close over here right and i don't think you want to go long over here and get your stop somewhere here it's, it's pretty large so what you can do is to place a buy limit order at a level where the market would have difficulty breaking through and in this case right it's simply this this uh uh this level over here right where i marked out as uh, support you can place a buy limit order right and your stop loss could still be at this same same level but your risk to reward would have you know improved tremendously right in this case you were lucky enough to get filled before the market you no know, close higher or basically you know, move higher from here so this is like a, a some, somewhat of a, a trading tip it can be applied to any form of trading especially when the market has really moved so much in your favor and you don't want to chase the market so what you can do is, is to have a, a buy limit order to see to see if you can get filled at a better price of course the downside to this is that you may not get filled okay but this is just a, a trading technique that you can consider uh with that said right that's generally you know what it's going on in the uh, currency markets moving on i want to share with you a commodity market this is sugar right it's looking interesting you can see that sugar right just zoom out a little it has been in a declining i'll call i call this a declining stage since uh 2016 right uh september all the way down lower okay and then this year since about someone in june july it started to range so that's a good thing right because you know the market it does not just it does reverse on a dime, right? But not often. Usually what it does is that it declines, starts to range, you know, starts to, you know, shake out all the weak players, right? And when no one is pretty much interested to trade it, it reverses back in the, the other direction. So this is what is potentially happening here on Sugar. You can see that the 200 MA is getting flatter. Price is, you know, starting to, you know, trade back above it. So what I'm looking for is that, you know, what I call, this is what I call a build-up. All right, a build-up is like a tight congestion, a consolidation. And this build-up has occurred near the highs right resistance this to me is a sign of strength why, why why do i say that because if you think about this okay this market is in a downtrend and now that it has approached this area of resistance the market is still not hitting lower so what this tells you is that there are buyers willing to bid at this higher prices willing to buy at this higher prices okay so this is a sign of strength telling you that you know buyers are willing to come in and bid at this higher prices so one way to go about trading it is if the market can break above this highs, right? This could be a setup to go long and you can have your stop loss, right? One ATR below this low, right? Say somewhere here, right? This would be a setup to go long in anticipation of, you know, the market reversing back towards the upside. And then you want to, you know, trail your stop loss, right? In case, right, this becomes a full-blown uh, trend, uptrend, right? So this is a sugar trade, which looks interesting. Uh, another one, let's look at gold okay so gold the market has been no really choppy recently you can see that volatility on gold has pretty much shrank you can see that you know it's, it's very tight within the you know 1300 range and the 1260 range so it's, it's very tight so usually what happens is that you know when the breakout occurs okay you don't want to fade the breakout meaning you don't want to go against the breakout because it's, it's usually the real move right so this is what is possibly happening in gold right now whether it breaks out lower or higher i don't know Right, but whichever di direction it breaks out, right, I don't want to go against it. In fact, I want to trade 
with it. So it has not broken out yet, but my plan right now is that whichever direction it breaks out, let's say, uh, let's say on the daily, let's use the uh, let's use the four hour. I think the price action there is is clearer. Let's say the four hour, right? Whichever direction that this market does break out of this tight range, right? I'll look to trade the flag pattern, right? Or maybe a retest of previous resistance and support in anticipation that the market would you know continue trading back in its uh the breakout direction. Okay, this is for gold. And the last market that I want to cover is, you know, something that I think get a lot of uh, feedback from. It's uh, Bitcoin. So Bitcoin again, right? So <laughs> I think I've done this, I've done a Bitcoin video the first time, I think a few months ago. And my, my take on it is still the same. No reason to be shorting this market, right? It's either you are on the sidelines or looking to get long. And that's pretty much it, right? If you want to short this market, you're just, you know, pretty much a very walking against uphill battle carrying a, you know like a full 100 kilo load it's just against you okay and uh the level that i'll look for i would say you know that has a that is i'm interested okay is this one over here right you should notice right bitcoin tends to retest previous a uh, highs that could act as support right this one previous highs i can support right so this one over here the 7900 level right could be a potential level to look for a long setup right so this market is volatile it's really volatile if you look at this candle over here it may not seem like it right but from this highs to this lows right it's a drop of about 20 percent so again right you better know how to you know apply proper risk management when you're trading this market right if you're trading on margin you do not know what is proper risk management you don't know what is position sizing i would say stay out of this market before you know it wipes out your account right so this is a this is really important right this bitcoin is a volatile market so with that said right i pretty much have come to the end of this week's market analysis i hope I hope this helps, right? So just to talk briefly, right? The first thing we covered is basically to look at the big picture, right? Covered about four factors, right? If you can remember, they are the entries, exits, trade management, and risk management to look at the big picture. That's what I emphasized. Then after which we progress through the different sectors of the market, right? We covered the FX market. Then we talk about sugar, a potential long setup on sugar. Talk about gold, right? That, you know, whichever the market breaks out on gold, I don't want to fade the breakout. Then we also talk about Bitcoin, which is this one over here. And the key message is, you know, not to go against the trend on Bitcoin. If either if you want to trade this, right, either it's no position on the sideline or you look for a long setup, possibly at, you know, the 7900 level for those of you who trade off the daily time frame. Okay, so with that said, right, I wish you good luck and good trading. We are in December and I wish you a fabulous trading month ahead. So if there's anything, any feedback, just let me know in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. And if you have enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, the subscribe button. It would mean... A lot to me. Alright, so with that, I'll talk to you soon.